Hello and welcome to vlog number 14. At last I'm up to date with orders and able to start the next sculpting project. As you'll know from my last vlog, this centres around Operation Bodenplate, the last major offensive by the Luftwaffe. I've wanted to release a 1 48 scale Mustang for some time, and the story of Bodenplate, and in particular the dogfight over Ash in Belgium, I found fascinating. I managed to find details of a BF 109 K4 that had been shot down in the attack, and information about the CO's aircraft from the 352nd Fighter Group. These two aircraft make a great pair, and help tell the story of Bodenplate. The BF 109 K4 was flown by Herbert Huss of JG 11, which attacked airfield Y 29 on the morning of January 1, 1945. Huss was an inexperienced pilot and was shot down by anti aircraft fire, bailing out and becoming captured by Allied forces. It took a bit of detective work to come up with the correct scheme for the K4, but I'm confident this is how Black 3 would have looked. The P-51D is the aircraft of Lieutenant Colonel John C. Meyer, who was the CO of the airfield Huss attacked in his BF-109 K-4. Meyer led the fight back against the marauding Luftwaffe, and was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for his actions. Meyer's Mustang is well documented, as you'd expect for an ace of his status. I begin by gathering all the information I have on the aircraft, trying to find the most accurate plans I can. In the case of the BF-109 K-4, I have an excellent set, with all the technical information I need. Late war Luftwaffe camouflage schemes are a bit of a nightmare, but this publication breaks down the schemes by production batch and date. So I now have everything pinned down to make a start on the K4. The P-51 is a much more straightforward project. The Mustang has always been a favourite of mine, and I've been collecting relevant books for years, so I have all the information I could ever need. Scanning and sizing drawings gives me a starting point to get a feel for the bulk of the models, and helps me work out how to break them down into parts. My parts list then helps me decide how I'm going to produce each part. For the Mustang, everything will start by being 3D printed, but many of these masters will be converted into metal masters via silicon moulds. The BF109 K4 is a bit more complicated, as I already have 109s in the range so I can use existing silicon moulds to cast and adapt some of the metal masters. There are still quite a few parts I'll have to create from scratch, so this is where it gets messy, especially with two aircraft simultaneously. This is the starting point of the masters for the BF-109, from several years ago, when we released the original BF-109E4. The fuselage and wing were sculpted in milliput, and intended to cover all types of the 109. This is the technique I've used for many years to create my masters. From these milliput masters, I made cold cure silicon moulds to convert the parts into metal masters. You can see how I make and cast this type of mould in my latest how-to series. I have to be pretty careful casting from these moulds, as there's quite a lot of metal poured in at over 280 degrees C. The last thing I need is to have the mould open and spray metal everywhere. Once the metal's cooled sufficiently, I can open the mould and take out the casting. And this is the quality of casting I get from these moulds. I know it's pretty rough, but I have enough metal here to enable me to file the castings down to the correct size. The Milliput Masters were originally sculpted oversized to allow for this. After a few days of filing, sanding and milliputting, this is where I'm at. Everything is now the right size and shape. The distinctive wing blisters and fuselage bulges have been added with milliput. Detail has been scribed on and the parts now fit together. So this is the old school approach. Let's see how it compares to the latest methods. The Mustang has been created entirely on the computer using 3D modeling software. The computer model can also be used to create realistic images to help check the model. Once complete, the model can be broken down into its component parts and processed in slicer software to get it ready for 3D printing. Here you can see the different layers that the 3D printer will lay down for the fuselage. 
and here you can see the same process for the wing. The blue honeycomb is support material, which is auto-generated. I've now repaired the lights on my 3D printer, so you can see the printer at work. The fuselage took about 13 hours to print. There are a lot of settings you can change to get it to print faster, but this can affect the print quality. The wing took much longer, at one day 16 hours to print. If you look closely, you can see the support material. This is designed to break away when I clean up the wing later. All of the parts I print on this printer are in ABS. This Ultimaker printer is great for large parts like the fuselage and wing, but not so good for smaller detailed parts. And here are the parts, fresh from the printer. I created my own support structure for the fuselage to keep it rigid. The parts came out really well. They are fairly smooth, but they'll still need filling and sanding to get them as smooth as I need. The undercarriage and other parts I printed on my resin printer, which is great for smaller, more detailed parts. The undercarriage are then cleaned up and sent away to be cast in bronze. The parts for the resin printer are prepared in a different slicer software and again supports are automatically generated. 3D printing these parts took about 12 hours. I'm still learning how to orientate the parts to get the best result with this type of printer. With the resin fully cured, I can now start cutting the parts free from their supports. The resin is really brittle and it goes everywhere. I do have to be careful not to accidentally break off an edge or a small piece of detail. This is always fun to do as the parts slowly emerge and you see how well the parts are printed. And here they are, I'm really pleased with the result. As you can see from the prop, I've started adding milliput to the parts to make them easier to cast from the silica moulds. All of these parts will be converted into metal masters. While the resin printer was running, I've been cleaning up and fitting the fuselage, wing and tailplane. Much to my relief, they've gone together really well. Still lots to do, but it's a good start. So, this is where I'm at so far. The metal masters for the BF109K4 are coming together well. They're closer to being finished than the Mustang masters, but both aircraft will be released together. As with all my new releases, they'll be accompanied by two new figures for each aircraft, to give scale and context. The next episode will see these two limited edition aircraft completed and in production. So if you'd like a BF109K4 or a P51D, get in touch via my contact details in the description. I hope you enjoyed my vlog. If you did, hit the like button, share and subscribe to my channel so you can see the next episode when it goes live. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.